12th standard english students now we are going to continue po ulysses t is not too late to seek a never world push off and sitting well in order smite the sounding furrows for my purpose holds to sail beyond the sunset and the bots here elias is addressing his friends what he was addressing he tells them what he's been telling us all along it's never too late to go in search of new lands it is never too late here your furrow refers to the track or mark made in the water by the ship he tells his sailors to smite smite which means strike most likely with oars purpose can mean two different things it can mean either destiny as in intent to sail as far as i can the bots of all the western stars is not a place where the stars go to the bath themselves it refers to the outer ocean a river that greeks believed surrounded the earth they thought the stars descended into it uh, to sail beyond to sail beyond the sunset and the bots so bots ulysses wants to sail really really far away beyond the horizon of the known universe until he dies so here the new words smite which means strike furrow mark made in the water by the ship bots outer ocean a river that greeks believed to surround the flat earth of all the western stars until i die it may be that the gulf will wash us down it may be we shall touch the happy isles and see the great achilles whom we knew so here to sail uh, the happy isles refers to the islands of the blessed the happy isles refer to the islands of the blessed a place where big time greek hero is like hero is like achilles enjoyed perpetual summer after they died we can say heaven we can use the heaven ulysses realizes that he and his companions might die but he's okay with that if they die they might even get to go to the happy isles and visit their old pal achilles achilles which means the greatest of greek warriors so here new words gulf a deep inland of the sea almost surrounded by land happy isles a fortunate island situated in the atlantic ocean popularly known as greek paradise achilles the greatest of greek warriors so again you have to repeat that stanza of all the western stars until i die it may be that the gulf will wash us down it may be we shall touch the happy isles and see the great achilles whom we knew though much is taken much abides and though we are not now that strength which in old days moved earth and heaven that which we are we are one equal temper of heroic hearts mad weak by time and fat but strong in will to strive to seek to find and not to yield so abides which means accept or act in accordance with so here ulysses yet again tells us that even though he and his sailors are old and don't have a lot of gas left in the tank there is enough left to go a little further abides is a word that means remains always accept or act in accordance with these guys are a team with one heartbeat 
they are old and broken but they still have the will to see out and face challenges without giving up the phrase strong in will to strive to seek to find and not to yield means something like we are strong something like we are strong because of our will because of our confidence self confidence or the will power to strive or our will to strive is strong so here finally he has completed in this poem ulysses alfred tennyson just we have to recall this poem here and ulysses the king of ithaca had returned to his kingdom after 20 years of the trajan war after the trajan war 20 years completed he returned he has wandered different strange and unknown places and seen many countries and he had seen many countries lands and woods at last he has returned to his house with full of experience he had full of experience okay different kinds of country he would see still speaking to himself he proclaims that he cannot rest from travel still now he is speaking what he was speaking i he, i cannot rest from travel so he likes to tra- he likes to travel he likes to use the travel but feels compelled to live to the fullest and swallow every last drop of life he has enjoyed all his experience as a sailor who travels the seas and that considers himself a symbol for everyone who wanders and ro- roams the earth he declares that it boring to stay in one place and that to remain stationary is to rest rather than to shine he wants to the migration he is not staying the particular place he wants to move another one place so he wants to visit a many other countries Ulysses asks his companions to gather at the port where the ship is ready to sail. His companions have faced both sunshine and thunder with a smile. They are united by their untying spirit of adventure. Though death would end everything, Ulysses urges his companions to join him and sail beyond the sunset and seek a never fall regardless of consequences. these brave hearts had once moved heaven and earth he has the brave courageous brave hearts they have now grown old and weak physically but their spirit is young but his energy is very young and energetic so he insists as to seek adventure true knowledge and strive to lead meaningful lives so we have to live the meaningful live true knowledge and strive to lead the final verse the phrase we have seen to seek to strive okay through the confidence so we can live the meaningful life he who said to you like through the ulysses poem we have learned how is every hour important to ulysses so what we have learned how is every hour important to ulysses ulysses says that each additional hour that he lives or each hour that he is saved from death brings him new experience so what we have learned in our life just we have to apply okay so then uh, here what does ulysses do the king ulysses sits with his wife by the fire and makes laws for people who don't even know him purpose in life what was the ulysses purpose in life Ulysses purpose in life is to sail far away beyond the horizon of the unknown world until he dies. So here the figures of speech uh, what we have learned the Ulysses poem figures of speech here uh, through scudding trips the rainy heads vex the dim sea. In this line we can use that personification for always roaming with a hungry heart always roaming with a hungry cat ulysses indirectly compares so it is called metaphor so direct comparison we can use simile 
here indirect comparison we can use metaphor always roaming with a hungry heart so this is metaphor we can use and drank delight of battle with my peers metaphor enjoying battle is indirectly compared to drinking so we can use metaphor moans round with many voices moan round with many voices so living non living things comparing with living things so it called as personification uh, voices given the human qualities it moans with many voices to follow knowledge like a sinking star like so like is a simile like or as if you have the poetic lines so you can use simile the opposite of knowledge is directly compared to a sinking star using the word like there lies the port of the vessels puffs her sail so alliteration the words port and puffs the initial consonant sound p p port and puffs are alliterated words so we can easily identify that figures of speech suppose if they ask identify the figures of speech we have to read then we have to what we have learned the figures of speech simile or metaphor personification alliterations okay, so we can easily use that so this uh, ulysses arthur already we have learned the alfred tennyson just we can recall that tennyson alfred tennyson alfred tennyson was born on august 6 1809 in england he is one of the most well loved victorian poets he showed an early talent for writing at the age of 12 he wrote 6000 line epic poem he wrote 6000 lines a big poem his father taught him in the classical and modern languages in 1830 tennyson published poems chiefly lyrical and in 1832 he published a second volume entitled simply poems in 1850 with the publication of in memoriam tennyson became one of the britain's most popular poet the alfred tennyson became one of the britain's most popular poet he was selector poet laureate in succession to wordsworth so just he compared the successful that wordsworth at the age of 41 tennyson had established himself as the most popular poet of the victorian era he is the most popular poet mr era in 1884 which year so he published 1884 he accepted a peerage becoming alfred lord tennyson afterwards they renamed alfred lord tennyson he died on october 6 1892 and was buried in westminster abbey england he is the author of ulysses poem okay so ulysses uh, which roman name for ulysses Udys- we can use so okay students uh that ulysses is very important just we have to identify the figures of speech and important lines is very important thank you